is up at DennisPrager.com, or you can go to, straight to his website, TommyHorowitz.com. And uh, you, you yourself, I asked you if you, and I did remember, I, I did watch your video and I'd forgotten. You did speak uh, to a, a demonstrator or two, because uh, you were, and you were recognized, which is a danger. I was always wondering when it's going to finally happen, you'll be recognized. Then what happened? Well, then they, they proceeded to, so what, one of the things they do when the, when the federal officers come out and, and, and hold the line to make sure that they, they can no longer threaten the federal building is they throw glass bottles, sometimes Molotov cocktails, at the, um, at the officer. So the, the, there's a lot of littered glass on the floor just outside of the federal building, and they began to pick up the, uh, the glass and, and, and throw it at me. It wasn't that bad. I got out. Of, I was able to extricate my, myself out of the situation pretty pretty quickly, um, and uh, that was the first. I actually went there for two nights. That was the first night. The second night, I came back. This time, I came back with security. Um, and uh, so, yeah. So I, I, we interviewed. You know, I don't know, probably a dozen or so people uh, before we had to hightail out, and the response was was was. Very similar. And, uh, as you know, kind of what I try to do is uncover the nature of someone with just a few penetrating questions, right? In this case, I really asked two questions for the most part. And the first question was, is it time to end the American experiment? And second question was, do you see, are you trying to use chaos, right? Because what you're seeing, what I was seeing around me, what what we're seeing around the country in these blue cities is, is, out of control chaos, but is chaos being used as a tool to accomplish the first, to end America? And the response was, with one exception, was pretty much unanimous that yes, in both cases, America has to end as we know it, because that's the only way that we can build equality, not equality of opportunity, but equality, of course, of outcome. And we can't do that within the context of how the founders framed this country. And yes, chaos is absolutely what they are using to accomplish this goal. And I thought it was, uh, and, and I, when I said it was an exception, there, there, there was an exception. There was a, a, a black man who I interviewed at the end, and he was beside himself at how these people were using a black lot, because this is all ostensibly a Black Lives Matter protest, right? This is what they said they were there for. In reality, they weren't. But this guy recognized that. And a number of black uh, protesters who were there recognized that they were hijacking what they're trying to do, what they're trying to accomplish, and using that to push their Marxist agenda. And they noticed that they were seeing si- socialist flags, Marxist flags, Soviet flags, Antifa flags. They noticed these things, and they were beside themselves and how they thought that this violence, what was happening to them, is counterproductive to what they're trying to accomplish, and that so few black people were actually out there. And it's true, the vast majority of them, they were saying 98%, I don't know what the exact number was, but a significant percentage were, were, were white. The whole thing was, was fascinating and, and troubling all at the same time. Do you know uh, if n- nearly all of the violent protesters are from Oregon? Yeah, I, I would I, I I would say the vast vast majority. I mean, I mean, they, they were they, some may may been from Washington as well, but the vast majority are local. And by the way, that's the other lie that they've said. When I was in Milwaukee, it was a, not Milwaukee, Minneapolis, same thing. It's all outside agitators, hogwash. These were almost all people internally mm-hmm. from the city right. um, who who feel that way. And. The overwhelming majority were white, and any other generalizations for, uh, uh, let's say, age or sex? It was actually uh, uh, quite split gender-wise. Am I allowed to say that? Are we allowed to assign gender? I can't assume somebody's gender, so I, can't, I, I, I refuse to answer that question because I don't want to be canceled. I but understand. it seemed to me that most of the people there were uh, non-menstruating people. I'm sorry, we're, we're equally between non-menstruating and menstruating. Right. Uh, and, um, yeah, look, it was tough to show if there was organization. That there, there, there was, look, there's obviously a generalization you can make is about their political beliefs. Right? I don't think there's anybody in the center or right of center who were there. Um, but people were pretty open and honest about what they stood for. What they stood for was the dissolution of the United States.
I, I'm silent because uh, you, know, you you wonder what produces people it, it, <laughs> to want to destroy something so so uniquely good. It's we have never taught in our schools, and I and I hate to say it, in our homes. I don't think the teaching, the the, the, the teaching of American values, yeah. has not been a priority for our school. Certainly not for our schools and many people our homes. No. And when right. and when people so oftentimes come to me and say, I don't know how my son became a leftist or how my son went to university and became anti-Israel, and I say to them, I hate to say it, but chances are it's kind of your fault. You didn't spend the time, the effort yeah, that's right. to inculcate them in American values. That's and correct. that's the result. That is exactly right. So uh, your video is, what is it titled? Uh, Inside the Portland Riots. Okay, so it's, it's up at DennisPrager.com it. and at Ami Horowitz's. All right, my friend, I'll uh, look forward to your next video from Tehran. <laughs> Will do.